Hi guys! So we are ready for Saxon Phonics Lesson 66. So welcome back to our new semester. It's after Christmas and so let's see how far we're going to get with Saxon Phonics this year. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to say our alphabet in a funny way, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to whisper the vowels and then we're going to say the consonants louds. Are you ready? So we say B, C, D, F, G, H, J, K, L, M, N, P, Q, R, S, T, B, W, X, Y, Z. Very good. And one of those consonants we worked on right before break, and we said sometimes it can act as a vowel. So what consonant was that? That's right. Sometimes Y acts as a vowel, too. So technically, I guess we could have said Y in a medium voice because it can be a consonant, but it can also be a vowel sound sometimes. All right. So you're going to echo the word I say, and you're going to tell me what the initial sound is, so the beginning sound, and then we're going to change that initial sound. Are you ready? So if I say the word, Back, back. What's the initial sound? B. Very good. Now I want you to change the B in back to a P. And what do you have? Pack. Very good. How about tame? Tame. What's the initial sound? T. -t. Good job. I want you to change the T in tame to a S. And what do you have? Same. Very good. What about the word feet? Feet. The initial sound is very good. So change the f in to a b in feet. Beat. Good job. What about the word roll? Roll. What's the initial sound? The er sound. Very good. In roll, I want you to change the er to a h. And what do you have? Hole. Very good. How about rat? What's the initial sound in rat? It's er again, very good. So I want you to change the er in rat to a k and you get cat, good job. All right, what about the word soak? Soak, what's the initial sound? S very good. So change the s in soak to a j and you get joke, very good. All right, and what about fake? Fake, what's the initial sound? Very good. So change the f to a j in fake and you get Jake. Good job. All right, so we're going to go ahead and name our letter name cards. Are you ready? So we have digraph TH, digraph NG, digraph EE. -E. Very good. And using that word digraph, remember what does digraph mean? That's right, it means two letters that make one sound. And this is when we added, ready? Combination ER because it's a combination. Very good. And then what do we have here? Trigraph I-G-H. Good job. Then we have vowel Y, A consonant E, final syllable T-L-E, D, final syllable P-L-E, U consonant E, E consonant E, final syllable D-L-E, W, O consonant E, B, G, U, R, I consonant E, final syllable G, L, E, M, final syllable B, L, E, X, Y, J, V, final syllable F, L, E. Very good. All right. Let's look at all of our sound spelling cards. Are you ready? So remember, we're going to say the word. We're going to say the sound it makes, and then we'll say the name of it afterwards. Are you ready? So I say sheep, E, digraph, E, E. Very good. Then we have umbrella, U, uh, U, ruffle, fool, final syllable, F, L, E, staple, pull. Final syllable, P-L-E, bugle, ghoul. Final syllable, G 
L E. Ring. Ng. Digraph N G. Very good. Yarn. Y. Y. Inch. I. I. Cake. A. A. Consonant E. Very good. Butter. Er. Er. Combination. E. R. Feather. Th. Digraph T H. Goat. G. G. Cube. U. U. Consonant E. Wagon. W. W. Thimble. Digraph T H. Dime. I. I. Consonant E. Shark. Sh. Digraph S H. Vest. V. V. Light. I. Trigraph I G H. Then we have hose. O. O consonant E. Candle. Dull. Final syllable. D L E. Box. X. X. Bubble. Bull. Final syllable. B L E. Hook. U. Uh. Digraph O O. Cry. I, I, bow, I, the word's different, jar, j, j, tooth, ooh, digraph, o, o, elephant, e, e, equal, e, candy, e, bow, I, very good. All right, so you're going to listen to the words that I say and what do all the words have in common? Are you ready? So they have something in common. Grapevine, homeroom, dishcloth, ladybugs. Hmm. Grapevine, homeroom, dishcloth, ladybugs. Let's see. All of these words are compound words. Remember, a compound word is made up of two smaller words. So look, I've got grapevine, homeroom. Dish cloth. So we broke these big words into two smaller words right here. We drew the line. When we have to read a compound word, we have to break those words in half before we can code it and figure out how we're going to break that word apart, okay? So we have to break that word in half and then we can code it. See, look, we have to look on the one side of the word grape and actually code the word grape and then code the word vine. We don't look at them together because it won't make sense. So over here you can say grape is an A consonant E word. So I can see that I had to do it that way. And then vine is an I consonant E word. So I had to make sure that vowels are, are long and those E's are silent. Home, room. I coded them separately. Dish, cloth. I coded, I had to code them separately. All right. We're going to watch just a really quick video on compound words. <laughs> Children's songs, sing and move along. Children's songs, make your brain and body strong. It's fun to make two words one. It's fun to make two words one. Put one hand up for the first word. Put the other hand up for the second word. Put the two words together and clap your hands. Play, ground, playground. Pop, corn, popcorn. Sun, flower, sunflower. Pan, cake, pancake. It's fun to make two words one. It's fun to make two words one. Dog, house, doghouse. Rain, bow, rainbow. Bath, tub, bathtub. Water, melon, watermelon. Let's do some more. Jelly, bean, jelly bean. Hot, 
dog, hot dog. Sun, shine, sunshine. It's fun to make two words one. It's fun to make two words one. We just made compound words. So now that we've made some compound words, we're going to go ahead and try to code some of those compound words. All right, we're ready to do our coding for today. And we've got a little bit longer, some long words today. So we're going to have to really break them apart, okay? So let's go ahead and start with our first word. What do you notice about it? That's right, it's got that ing suffix. So I'm going to box it off because remember, it's like it's by itself. Because if it's a suffix, it means the rest of the word makes sense. That root word makes sense by itself. So let's see, what's in our root word? It's got that SH, so I'm going to underline it, which says shh. It's got digraph SH, very good. What else does it have? That's right, digraph OO, which can make two different sounds. It can say oo or it can say uh. So the SH says shh, oot. Shoot. Does shoot make sense? Yes, but we could try it the other way and say sh, ut, shoot. Does shoot make sense? No, so shoot in. Shooting. Very good. All right, let's look at our next word. What do you notice in this word? Well, this one's easy. All it has is that digraph OO, so I'm going to underline it. And then we're going to try. Let's see. Let's try it with the uh sound first. P, uh, ooh. Does that make sense? No, let's try it with p, ooh, pool, very good. So shooting, pool. All right, and then let's look at our next word. What do you notice about it? I don't have any suffixes. I don't have an s or an ing, so I can't look at that. Where's my vowel? I've got a vowel that's the i. It's got a consonant behind it, so I know it's going to be short. So now I can see that cr, and that cr is going to say cur. So cur is. Crisp. Very good. What about the next word? What do you notice about it? It has something that we just talked about last week, doesn't it? It has that final stable syllable. This syllable is always the same. So I'm going to put the bracket and bracket off that pull. Because remember pull. And remember, listen when I say pull. Pull. Do I hear that E at all? No. So I'm going to cross off that E because it's silent. So now that my pull is stable and it's by itself, let's look. Where's my vowel? My vowel is A. It's got a consonant behind it, so that the A is short. Very good. So app, pull, apple. Very good. All right, over here, what do you notice? It's got an S at the end. So let's go ahead and box it off and act like it's a suffix. We'll check it when we're reading the word to make sure. All right, what else do you notice? Where are my vowels? I have an I and I have a... E. And then I have T's in between, which are consonants. So what am I going to do? I'm going to divide those consonants right down the middle. So now my vowel is in front of a consonant, so that vowel is short. So my first syllable has that FR, which says fur. So I've got fur, it, frit. Very good. Now look at my next syllable. I've got an E, but the consonant behind it is R. So remember, that's that combination ER. So I'm going to hook it together underneath. So, and it's going to say er. So t, er, ter. So frit, ter, fritter. Very good. And then I'm adding that plural suffix s, fritters. Fritters. Very good. And since when I say it, listen, fritters, it makes the z sound. So I'm going to put that through. All right, our last one. Are you ready? This is a really long word. Okay. I have to figure out where am I going to even break it apart. This is one of those um, compound words. So if I look at this word, I'm going to say, okay, I see two different words here. Do you see it? I see under and line. So I'm going to break it apart right there. Okay. My first part over here, I'm going to have to look at to see how I'm going to code it. Okay. Where are my vowels? That's right, I've got a U as a vowel, and I've got E as a vowel. And then N is a consonant, and D is a consonant. So remember, I've got that vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel, so I can split it right down the middle, okay? Now, here's where it gets tricky. I've got a vowel in front of a consonant. That's easy, I know it's gonna be short. So, un, very good. 
My next one, I have a vowel in front of a consonant because R is a consonant, but it's an E and an R. And remember, those are special. That's that combination ER. So I'm going to hook them together underneath and say der, der. So under, under. Very good. So my first word in my compact pound word is under. Then over here, where are my vowels? I've got an I and I've got an E and I've got an N in between. So this is going to be one of those I consonant E words, okay? So if it's an I consonant E words, I know that I is going to be long and that E is going to be silent. So I'm going to mark it out. So line, line. So underline. So underline. And then our last word, what do you notice about it? It's got that TH, very good, that digraph TH. So I'm going to underline it. And when I'm sounding it out, I'm going to see if it's going to say a th or a th sound, okay? So, and then the E is in front of the M, so that E is going to be short. So the M, them. So underline them. Let's go ahead and read those words one more time. I have shooting, pull, crisp apple fritters, underline. All right, we're going to connect to Seesaw so that we can complete our activity sheet now. Hi, guys. All right, we're ready to go ahead and do our activity sheet that goes along with Lesson 66. And remember, today we talked about compound words. So we're going to start by just writing down the different ways we can spell some sounds, okay? So if I say O, oh, how can we spell O? Oh? That's right. We can say O oh, consonant E. Oops. Or, and then comma, we can also just have a long O by itself. Okay, what about U? That's right, we could have U consonant E, or we can make a comma and it can also be U. How about the U uh sound, U, uh, like in B, uh. That's right, it's that digraph O, O, very good. What about the U sound, U? That's O, O too, that's right. Remember, that O, O can make two different sounds. All right, here's the long one. Are you ready? What about the k sound? K. That's right. We have K comma C because K and C can both make that in the beginning or middle of words. Then we have endings. C, K comma K, E comma K and C. We have all those different ways to make that k sound. What about the mm sound? That's right, digraph TH. And then how about the, th, like, thimble? Good job, digraph TH. All right, what about the er sound, er? That's right, we talked about it last week. It's that combination ER. How about E, if I want to spell E? Well, I've got digraph EE. -E comma e, but then I also have endings, digraph ee, -E, and then remember the y. The y at the end of words can make that e sound. And then on number 10, what about the d sound? D. If I want to say d, how would I spell that? That's right. It could be d, and it can also be final d or ed. Remember that ed sometimes makes the d sound. All right, what if I want to spell the word on number 11, her? What do we hear for her? H, good job. Then er, er. Remember that er is that E-R together because we know it has to have a vowel in each word, so it can't just be the R. Okay, what about hope? Hope, if I spell hope. H, very good. Then O, O, P, P. P. And I don't hear anything else, but for it to be that long O, it's got to have what? A sneaky E at the end, because otherwise it says hop. So I have to make sure I add that sneaky in to make it hope. Okay, on number 13, we're going to try to spell. It's kind of a longer word. Are you ready? Bedtime. Bedtime. So remember, we're going to break it apart by the word. So the first word, bed. What do you hear in bed? B, 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 very good. E, 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 D. D. So there's our first word. Bed and then time. T, t. T. Very good. Then I. That long I. M. M. 
what do I need? It says, right now it says bed Tim. To make it that long eye, I need a sneaky E. That's right. How about toothpaste? Toothpaste. So break it apart into our first word. Tooth. So t, t, T. Very good. Then ooh. O, O. Good job. T, oof. That's right, T-H. So there's our first word, then paste. P, P. P, A. Good job. St, st. S, T. It actually has a long E at the, or a silent E at the end, paste. How about bathtub? Bathtub. B, B. B, good job. A, A, A. T, H. Good job. And then tub, t, 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 uh, uh, u, and then b, b, good job. All right, these first five words are all compound words because we have to figure out where each part of the word is. The first one, it says tooth brush. So first I need to break it apart right there, and I'm going to code on either side. So on tooth, on that part of the word, um, what do you see that we can code? That's right, it's got OO, so I'm gonna underline OO. And it's got TH, so I need to underline it. So I have T, OOTH, tooth. And then over on the other side, what do you notice? I've got SH that needs to be underlined. And I have a U in front of an S, so it's gonna be short. So brush, brush, tooth, brush. Very good. All right, where would I break apart the next word? That's right, I see cup, so I'm gonna break it apart right there. And now on cup is a CVC word, so I know all I need to do is make that U short. On the other side, well, what do I do? Well, I've got S at the end, so I need to box it off. Then I've got that A consonant E, so it's going to be a long A with a macron, and then I'm going to cross out the E. So I've got K, A, X, cake. So cup, cakes. Okay, what about the next room or the next word? Well, I see bed, so I'm going to break it apart right after bed. And bed is B-E-D, so that E is going to be short. Bed, and then over here, that digraph O-O, I'm going to underline it. So, room, room, bed, room. All right, on number 19, how would I break apart that word? That's right, I need to break apart right here. So, when I do that, over on the one side, I've got that double S, so I can cross one of them off. I've got an A in front of S, so I know it's going to be short, so gr, ass, grass. And then on the other side, what do you notice? Where are my vowels? Well, I've got a vowel here on O, and I've got a vowel here, and then I've got consonant, consonant. So I can break it apart in between. And now it's like having H-O-P, which is a CVC word, so I know that O is going to be short. Hop, hop, and then... My vowel over here is that ER combination, so I gotta hook them together. So p, er, per. So grass, hopper. And I can see that matches my picture, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line. And then on number 20, what do you notice? I need to break it apart right here, so I have afternoon, afternoon. So over here on after, I have a vowel for A, and I have a vowel for E, and I have those consonants in between, so I'm gonna break it apart. So that means that A is in front of the F, which is going to be short, so AF. And then over here, what do you notice? T-E-R. That's right, I've got the E-R, so I need to connect it, so T-E-R, after. And then over on the other side, we've got that O-O, so I'm just going to underline it. Today, we are just going to skip numbers 21 through 25, so you can actually just cross those off, since we had so, so much longer words to code, okay? Now, on the back, I'm going to read the passage, and you guys are going to work on listening for the answers. Are you ready? So it says, Frank likes to make pancakes on the weekend. He gets up and makes the, let's break this apart, batter, batter. As Meg and I wake up, he serves us fresh pancakes with butter. One weekend, he discussed the big game with his friend, Ted, as he cooked pancakes. That weekend, he made black pancakes.
pancakes. So if he's talking, he got distracted and he let him get burned. Okay, so let's read the question. Who likes to make pancakes? So, hmm. Right up to the beginning it says, Frank likes to make pancakes. So I can write the word Frank. Oh, he's going to highlight so we know where our answer came from. Who sleeps longer on the weekends? So who sleeps longer on the weekends? Hmm. It says, he gets up and makes the batter. As Meg and I wake up, he serves fresh pancakes with butter. One weekend, he discussed the big game with his friend Ted as he cooked pancakes. That weekend, he made black pancakes. So let's look at it. Well, Ted, it doesn't talk about how he sleeps, right? So we know it's not Ted. Okay, so I can cross off that answer. And Frank was the one up cooking, so it's not Frank. So as Meg and I wake up, so they're the last people to wake up, so we're going to say Meg and I. Who was discussing the game? Well, that's right, because we know it has to be Frank, because Frank was the one cooking. And then the other person discussing the big game with his friend, Ted. So Frank and Ted. Good job. All right. There's a couple words that you can practice down at the bottom. And then you can go ahead and be done for the day. All right, you guys did an awesome job.